Hi everyone, I'm Donna, the president here at Bookkeeping Made Simple, and I'm going to talk to you today about why I hate DIY. I hate it. I do not like to DIY much of anything. Um, I hate it. And I hate the whole mindset. It is very prevalent here in Utah where we live. It is less so in other parts of the country. California doesn't really have such a DIY um, mindset, uh, particularly among business owners. But I'm going to talk to you about why I hate this mindset. And, oh, that mindset sucks. So Chip and Joanna Gaines are experts. They're not do-it-yourselfers. In fact, really, Chip and Joanna Gaines show up for the shot. They're actors. They are not in there doing the work. They hire experts for that. Millionaires typically don't mow their own lawns. They hire someone to do that. Um, you know, unless it's something they very much enjoy doing. My parents are quite well off. Um, they do mow their own lawns, but they are retired and they enjoy it. Um, this is absolutely endemic here in Utah. This whole idea that I have to do it all myself. And I have talked to several, especially my female clients about this. Um, it is just such a terrible mindset to have. Um, and, uh, you know, yes, there's a lot of things I can do. I am a very good baker. I can cook. Um, my, my sweetheart, Christopher is an excellent chef. Um, and he, hunt, he can hunt and he can fish and he can go out and he can track down our food and get it to us if we need it, ever needed it. But that is not where he makes his money. I do not make money baking. I bake because I enjoy it, not because I make money from it. I need to, um, it's actually more cost effective to go to the grocery store, okay? So by way of example, let's say you're an electrical contractor. Wires and switches are your life. You know how to do anything electrical related um, to homes and to commercial properties. And you make a lot of money installing electrical fixtures. You can wire homes from the foundation up. You know everything there is to know about wiring a house, okay? And then you find out that your neighbor decided to DIY his ceiling fan. You go take a look at it and it's awful. <laughs> it's ugly. There's like wires falling down. It's sparking. <laughs> And you're afraid it's going to fall out of the ceiling and set the house on fire. Um, this actually isn't uh, too far off. Okay. Wires aren't grounded properly. I have seen this, by the way, in the house that I'm living in now, which is a rental. Um, I've seen this. There are wires in this house that aren't grounded properly. Um, this is a, a mostly a DIY-based house. Um, the cable outlets do not work in most rooms of the home. Um, actually, I think we've got the Wi-Fi router in the one room in the house where the uh, cable outlet actually works. And then I moved my office into a different room, um, thinking I was also going to be able to just plug right into the cable. No, it doesn't work in here. Um, it would have to be completely rewired and it's a rental, so we're not going to do that. Um, and I'm sure that the owners of this house looked it up on YouTube and decided that they know how to install cable. <sighs> and I'm sure he spent hours and hours watching this stuff. And if you're the electrical contractor or the cable contractor and you know backwards, forwards, and in your sleep how to do this, you could have done it in an hour Oh, maybe a couple. Because everything, you know, everything is pretty much there. You just had to install the, the uh, ceiling fan. You could have done this in your sleep. Imagine how you felt. OK. 
Okay. And now imagine that your friend, your neighbor said, yeah, yeah, I had a really tough time with it. It took me a week. Uh, you know, I, I almost electrocuted myself in the process. Uh, it cost me $5,000 for this $200 ceiling fan. And you just go, why did you do that? Okay. You could have saved them time, money, and frustration if they had just come to you and said, hey, Dave, <laughs> I have a ceiling fan I need installed. Could you do it for me? I'll pay you. I see this every day. I see this all the time. Why on earth did you not just call the experts? It is so common to be, for people to be afraid of missing out. This is where the acronym FOMO comes in, fear of missing out. Um, we've got Pinterest. We can look things up on the internet. I keep laughing and saying, People made, I thought people made foolish decisions because of lack of information. The internet has proven that that is not the case. Um, not really trying to dig on anybody. I'm just as bad as anyone else. Um, we expect that we're gonna be able to do this stuff just as well as the people that do this stuff for a living. Yeah. In some cases, it's true that we can do it better than the experts. Um, again, Christopher and I eat at home a lot. Um, in fact, we eat at home most of the time because he's such a good cook. And he, but here's the caveat: he really enjoys cooking. Oh. He really enjoys cooking, and so because he enjoys cooking and he's good at it, we eat at home a lot. Um, if he didn't enjoy cooking and I didn't enjoy cooking, we'd probably eat out a lot. So you have to kind of balance a lot of things. Um, and again, I treat homemaking as a job. It's been my job for the past 30 more years than I really want to admit to. Um, and that allows us to live in a clean, comfortable home. Um, I make homemade goodies all the time. Eating out's a treat. This is not going to work for everybody. I enjoy homemaking. I don't enjoy housekeeping, but I enjoy making the home. Um, our friends that don't enjoy cooking, they eat out a lot more. My youngest sister, who's an absolute sweetheart, and she's one of my bookkeepers, when she was living in DC, she ate out almost every meal. Why? What well, was more trouble for her to buy groceries and get them to her apartment? She had to walk like a quarter mile from her parking lot to the apartment. Um, and, and uh, then cook, she's like, it was just so much easier and cheaper to just go out and get something cheap. Um, women are worse about this than men. We feel guilty over hiring a housekeeper or a, a home cleaner. Um, and we want to be able to do everything perfectly. Again, this is very Utah centric. Women really expect to be the perfect mom the perfect homemaker. It's really reinforced in the culture here that uh, you're supposed to be perfect at everything you do. And I do remember talking to a prospective client about this and really just I finally sat her down and said, you don't have to be good at everything. In fact, you can be good at the one or two things that you're really good at and push everything else off. If you're not an accountant, you probably shouldn't be spending a ton of time learning how to run QuickBooks. That's my job. That's my staff's job. We know how to run QuickBooks. We understand what's going on on the back end so that we can make these changes, adjustments, entries appropriately. We do want you to understand how, how to read your reports. That's a critical part of being a business owner. But you it has taken me 20 years. I laugh, I've been raising my prices. And I had one guy say, well, I've got this other firm that can do it for less. And I said, yeah, but uh, I have people here with master's degrees in accounting. I have an MBA. I, I've spent 20 years learning my craft. Um, it's not that you're paying me to do data entry. You're paying me to know what, what's going on with your books. And you're paying me to know what to do to help you when things get hard, and they will. 
there are so many little details that have to be handled. Um, there are, you know, let me go back a little bit. It is not probably, and, and for some business owners, it might be a really good thing to learn all the ins and outs of QuickBooks, but I would say for the most part, unless there's some, unless you just absolutely love digging into your books, and I have yet to meet a business owner that really loves digging into their books, except for me, and I'm a little bit weird. I made a career of this. Um, leave it to the people that are good at it. There are massive um, uh, negative consequences if you don't know what you're doing. Um, so most, most of the clients that I've talked to have basically said, <laughs> when I told one of my sisters, I have a whole bunch of sisters, by the way. Um, if you didn't already know that I have five sisters and two brothers that come from a large family. And then I have two daughters and three sons. Um, so I have a large family. And then I have a couple of kids that are, um, well, if they were on good terms with their dad, they'd be stepkids, I guess. Um, but I, I have a big family. I come from a big family. Christopher comes from a big family. We have a big family. It's just the way it is. Um, so I was talking to one of my sisters about, uh, she wanted me to move back home to Kentucky. Well, Kentucky's not home to me um, for several reasons. The biggest is that we moved there when I was already 14. And so it's, I've never really felt at home there. I was kind of brought up in this Seattle culture and never felt as comfortable in Kentucky as I did in, in the West. Um, I really love Utah. I really love uh, Orange County, California. Um, I really love being around big cities, not necessarily living in the middle of them, but being close to them. Um, and we didn't have that in Western Kentucky where the nearest big city is four hours away. Um, so my young, one of my sisters says, uh, Donna, you should come home and you should um, live in Paducah and drive a school bus. I said, uh, you know, Debbie, I love you. <laughs> but I would rather take a red hot poker and shove it through my eye socket than drive a school bus. Um, and I'm sure the kids on the bus would know that in the first 10 minutes. You know, I, I'm the oldest of a large family and I really like peace and quiet. Most of the business owners that I talk to about accounting, bookkeeping, controlling, CFO, they have kind of the same mindset about accounting that I do about driving a school bus. They would rather take a red hot poker, shove it right up their eye socket and give themselves a lobotomy before they would like to touch anything to do with their finances. And that's fine. I want to educate these business owners on what they actually need to do to, um, I just realized just how dark it is on this side of the room. So I am turning on my hue lights and turning them up to a uh, brighter. <laughs> Here we go. You can see me now. Um, I want my business owners to understand what's going on with their finances. I don't necessarily want their, them to be doing the financial work. Um, I would rather sit down with them and say, here are your reports. This is what they mean. This is what I think you should do. Take it with a grain of salt. Decide what you need, you where you want to go with your business. But as an accountant who's been in this field for 20 some odd years, probably more than that, I don't like getting older. Um, you know, you, you can make decisions based on these reports, but you don't have to be up to your nose and bookkeeping every single day. What I can do in five or 10 minutes takes most of the business owners that I've worked with hours, literally hours, because I already know all the shortcuts and I know how to do this. Um, I can train my staff to do what I do and they are able to 
follow my lead because this is all we do. This is all we do. Even if you're a CPA and you already know all of the shortcuts to QuickBooks, the worst books I have seen have been run by CPAs or people who are trying to position themselves as CPAs. I don't do either of those. I'm not a CPA. I am an accountant. Um, when the, what that means is I have the education a CPA has, but I didn't take the test. I'm, I, I'm thinking about taking the, the practice test just to see if I could pass. And I haven't done a year long internship in one of the big four companies. I have done the hard work down, on, down in the trenches with my business owners. And that's where my internship has come in. Um, so I haven't gotten the letters behind me. I'm not really interested in working with publicly traded firms anyway. And in a later video, I will talk about the difference between CPAs and EAs and accountants and bookkeepers and everything to go with that. Um, you know, what's a controller, what's a CFO, um, and we do offer those services. Um, but here's the thing. When it's your money that you're dealing with, you have an emotional connection to it. It's your money. Money is, it's a very emotional thing for a lot of people. This is how we obtain the goods and services that we want to make our life comfortable. We can do the bookkeeping and the accounting and the CFO and the controlling and all of that in a fraction of the time it takes most people to figure it out. We've already figured it out. I have made every mistake in the book um, and I am not shy about saying that. I have made every mistake, especially very early on in my career. I made a lot of mistakes and I learned from them. And some of the things I learned was that accounting is way more in depth than I thought it was. So I went back to school to get a degree. And then I learned that, well, maybe if I learned this much from getting my bachelor's degree, I should go on and get an MBA. Um, this is not something that I really feel like can be handled by someone other than an expert. I am still working on a set of books. I have just unleashed one of my bookkeepers on this um, and she's very conscientious um, where they hired someone in house to to do a certain amount of accounting I am having to go back several years and undo what she did because we can't figure out what her thought process was she has messed up these books so bad. She has expenses listed as bank accounts. She has um, overstated income by almost 50 to 100%, at least 50%. Um, I have been, I waited to the very last minute to file this guy's taxes because I was afraid, I was still thinking the income is overstated. And it may still be, but at least it's not, um, it's not material. It's, uh, we've gotten it down to just a fraction of what it was previously. So it's maybe overstated by 5% instead of 50 to 100%. Um, and this is someone who says that she knows how to do the books. And so I'm like, no, no, she does not. Here's what she did. She clicked accept all on the bank feeds and QuickBooks. I know exactly what she did. And I know exactly what she didn't do. And we don't do what she did. <laughs> we want to see what matches. We want to get everything matched up. We want everything. I mean, I have gotten kudos from many, many CPAs for saying how perfect my books were. Um, and that's really unusual because we have to do a lot of um, magic behind the scenes. But the CPAs that I work with typically say the books are clean. And so the other thing we can offer is a fresh take at your books. Even if one member of our staff is working on your books, there are other staff members that can take another look at your books and give you a fresh take. We can look at it and say, These are what we, this is what we see. I can look at their reports and say, this is what I see in your reports. This is where maybe I would change the way you spend. And when it's a business owner that's doing it himself, 
it is invariably a mess, invariably. Now I promise you, if you call me today and say you want to work with us and then you say, my books are the worst you've ever seen, I've seen the worst books in Utah. They're probably, your books probably aren't that bad. If you're coachable, they're not that bad. Um, the worst books in Utah are owned by a company who will remain nameless, um, but he has gone bankrupt once at least. Um, he's destroyed his own credit. He's now working off of his wife's credit. And, uh, and if you think it's about you, it's probably not, by the way. Um, and when I started working on his books and started telling him, dude, you need to change the way your, your business is run, um, he kind of took offense at that <laughs> and uh, didn't work with me anymore. So that is what I mean. That was the worst set of books I've worked on. And the reason they were so bad was because he wouldn't take feedback. So I'm gonna talk about feedback in a later video. So why not hire us and get it done right? Um, we do answer phone calls. Um, we do treat this as a business, not as a hobby. Um, we are conscientious about uh, how quickly we can get things done. Not every client or potential client is a good match for us. Um, and I will talk about that later on, maybe next week. But I know you don't like to do your bookkeeping yourself. And I know you probably <laughs> don't want to do any, it's called controlling when there's multiple business involved. Um, and you know, having a CFO might not be a bad idea. So why don't you get it done right the first time and every time? Give us a call. Our number is 801-692-0032. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Have a great day.